Look at that, Diplacus calicinus, one of the monkey flowers. Everything that's in, in the genus Erythranth or Diplacus or Mimulus is considered a monkey flower. Diplacus calicinus is only native to this small region of California. Ooh, very sticky. Large white, large yellowish white flowers. So I'm guessing moth pollination. God, it feels weird to be back in California again. Weird, but very nice. And it makes me realize how lucky I was to learn botany in a place like this. You don't have lands like this in Texas, and they're certainly not publicly accessible if you do. Look at all that nice, tortured, cooked rocks. Eriogonums, Bebia, all the fall blooming composites are going off. So this is a great example of why context matters. You look at this, this spiny bush, it's like a small tree, and you'd have no idea that its closest relative is an endangered species that lives in Florida. This is Pseudozyphus perii from the buckthorn family Ramnaceae. And you know, being the end of the dry season, the long dry summer here in California, it generally looks like shit, no offense, buddy. And it blooms in spring. You know, a lot, most of California gets winter rain, so it blooms in spring. But, I mean, this is a wild variation on a theme. I mean, if the closest relative lives in Florida, Pseudozyphus salata, and that's according to DNA. That's not just guessing from morphology. That's what the DNA tells us. Comparing uh, gene sequences, gene regions. If the closest relative's in Florida, that tells you how far back these shared a common ancestor. They're 3,000 miles apart now. But at some point in the last dozen million years or longer, they both diverged from the same ancestral species. The one in Florida forms colonies and is uh, critically endangered. There's not many of them left, but it doesn't get as tall as this. And it grows on sand, but you could still see this. Like the, the Florida species, this has zigzag branching, divaricating branching, but not as extreme as the Florida species. And the leaves are a little bit, a little bit larger. They've got that petiole and an entire margin, just like Pseudozyphus salata. And then the fruit is just this little, uh, this little droop. Wow, context matters. You pass by it on a hiking trail, you wouldn't know any of that. It just looks like a boring bush. <laughs> a boring bush. Definitely worth coming out here. Buckthorn family's got a lot of cool members of uh, in the deserts. A lot of cool members of, of Ramnesi in the deserts, in the dry regions. Oh, we, so we got that guy right there. That's the Pseudozyphus. And then there's no more anywhere here. And then we have a little colony of them right over there. It's an odd pattern, man. It likes the uplands. It doesn't even like being down in the wash, which is down there. We got a Fedra. We got Senegalia, we got nice I think that's Engelmanniae. We got Opunthia basilaris, the beaver tail cactus, and all this wonderful metamorphic rock beneath us. And Celia farinosa, all these wonderful desert plants I learned botany on and haven't seen in years. Yeah, this is a great, this is a great, oh, it's a great example. There's one, there's one, so it does seem to be forming colonies. Wonder what was messing with it in its evolutionary past. There's the fruit. See, look, they got that little point on them. It's a giveaway for them. I think they're just droops. I think there's just a single seed inside. You know, you can't forgive it. You can't forgive your friends for, or you have to forgive your friends rather, for looking like shit. You know, sometimes it's just the way it goes. Yeah, look at this divericate branching, this zigzag branching, forming a little cage. Is that the, is that a result of giant sloths? Huh? Could be. There's one over there. It's not just deer doing it. Deer and bighorn sheep, of which there are many here. All the flies are coming out. It's so mean when they're leafless, especially. Look at it. Quite a bit of fruit on these. There's like, like 10 droops on this whole bush. Oh, there's, there's quite a few here, but they're all forming a colony. I wonder if it's all the same genet. And these are just individual ramets, like if they're just, you know, it's all the same clone, but there's just different individuals. Or not different, you know what I mean. Different individuals of the same phenotype. 
all the same clone, you know, like aspens do. Or if they're actually, I mean, they, these are producing fruits, unlike the uh, Florida one. God, it's so weird, man. I love when you can look at a plant and just know from its form, you could tell something about, like, say, an extinct animal that was probably uh, selecting for a certain trait. Yeah, we're getting mobbed by these tiny mosquitoes. It's Senegalia gregii. Smells wonderful when it flowers. Chilopsis linearis. And another Upuntia species. God, the fuck, man, who knew these tiny mosquitoes are just mobbing us? God, look at those rocks. We're not on limestone anymore. We're not in, we're not in Texas anymore. Look at these colonies. It's a giant colony of Pseudozyphus. Rather large, too. Look at that. Look how big they get. Ephedra californica. Wild stuff to think about. Ooh, Hespero, Hespero yucca whiplii. And then sticking out like a sore thumb, mostly because of how green it is, we got Prunus elisifolia. A species of cherry. And there's one, there's a subspecies in the Channel Islands that gets pretty large and it's actually a great tree that grows fast as hell that I used, uh, I employed in illegal plantings I was doing in Oakland. You can see that thing sticks out here. How green it is. Yeah, I bet that water's, I bet you could just drink it as is. I'm not gonna take any chances, I don't want you to you, but you gotta filter anyway. One of those, you know, those Sawyer squeeze filters. Moon looks nice tonight. Ah, oh, it's beautiful, you know. I bet you could probably drink it, you know, but I'm not taking any chances, you know. You, you assume you could drink it, next thing you know, there's a home bum washing his ass two miles up, you know. Real long beard. Nice beer gut, just washing his ass right in, right in the, right in the, the, the little creek, right in the pristine snowmelt. You know, could happen. Could, could be what's going on.